happy to have Jen Peterson here from Grand Junction, in our Grand Junction office. Um, I spent some time with her last week, two weeks ago, talking to her. And her story, for me, her story is very much about uh, being present, being connected, supporting family, uh, while she's doing her business. And uh, she's not this person who's super vivacious, but she's super connected in her business. And I walked away feeling super inspired. So welcome, Jen. We're super glad to have you. And we really Thank you. The time. Um, so hopefully everyone will learn a little bit more about someone else that's doing business as a woman in our office. So Jen, when we originally connected, um, I felt really compelled to kind of ask you four questions that I set forth for you. And um, one was, how did you make your connection to real estate? And when? Tell me us a little bit more about that. Sure. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm super honored and flattered to be part of the group today. Um, so Jim and I met in the Midwest and we moved to Grand Junction in 2001. Um, we got married later that year. So 20 years this year for our wedding anniversary, which has gone by in like 13 seconds. So it's, it's pretty amazing how quickly it's gone by. Um, but we moved here to follow Jim's work. He's a banker. Um, and I started working for a title company here in town. My husband is a serial entrepreneur. So um, shortly after we moved here, we actually acquired three subway franchises, none of which were close to Grand Junction. One was three hours away, two or seven hours away. And I was a general manager in the franchisee. So I did all the traveling. I am a hell of a sandwich artist, by the way. And I'm also TCPY certified to make ice cream cakes. <laughs> so if you're hungry, just give me a call. Um, shortly after Subways started, um, he decided to branch out with his business partner and start building houses. And he went into his first meeting to acquire a couple lots, was hoping to pick up two, came out of that meeting with 10 lots under contract. So that started our building business. He later moved that over and had someone else actually manage that business. But I helped with all of it. I managed the subways. I took over the books for the building company. Um, I helped do some minor project management. And we thought, well, it's logical for me to get my real estate license and sell those homes. So my real estate career began as an extension to our construction company. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very, very nice. I think a lot of people relate to that as well. There's quite a few of us yeah, who, I, who know, start that way. Everybody has a different approach of how they get into the business. And I think for you, it was just this, it all of a sudden happened and you figured out how to apply yourself to it. But also at a very, at a very quick speed, you kind of had to learn the process and shift in doing that. You know, when we talked last week, you know, of course, obstacles in life are the things that we personally are always challenged to. Um, but for you, how have you overcome that balance between personal and professional? And how do you manage that in your daily life? Um, so one obstacle that um, I want to share with you is, is super personal. So you're going to hear a lot about me and my family and not much about real estate today. But um, about, let's see eight years ago, almost eight years ago, um, right after Christmas, um, we were standing in my kitchen and, and I'd stopped breastfeeding my youngest child. She was six months old when I stopped breastfeeding and um, I'd found a lump in my chest and I hadn't told Jim. I was like, I just didn't know how to, how to tell him. I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't want to really go down that road. I knew it wasn't good, but didn't want to go down that road. And so I finally told him a couple days after Christmas that, Hey, I found this lump in my chest and he grabbed my hands and he said, I can't do this without you. So we're going to have this checked and we're going to throw everything at it to fix it. So to me, that was um, considered an obstacle to most people, but it was actually just kind of a side path to our personal life, but it's who I am. It's part of my story. Um, and that's why I wanted to share that. Um, I'm a big advocate for, for self-testing and uh, ladies, check yourself, get checked annually. Guys, help your girls get checked to make sure all that stuff is taken care of. But what I'm getting at is that my husband and my support team is integral and was integral in, um, in me persevering through those situations in life. Um, we have four little girls. At the time I found my, my lump, um, my twins were five. We, have a, we had a three-year-old and my littlest was seven months old. Um, so we had a very young family. And over the following two years, I went through chemotherapy. This hair all fortunately came back, but I lost my hair. Um, I had a bilateral mastectomy, um, had both of my breasts removed, and, um, and then I had radiation. So 
Uh, a lot of stuff happened in those two years. But through that time, I actually kept working, which is probably kind of crazy to a lot of people to think, how do you manage cancer, um, cancer treatment for little kids, a spouse, and work at the same time? And really, work was a great distraction. Work helped us stay focused and um, moving forward in, in what we needed to do. So um, my, again, what I want to reiterate is just having that great support network when, when you have an obstacle, whether it's um, in life or professionally, having a great support network is integral. And my husband is, is paramount to that support network for our family. Well, I'm speaking prof yeah. <laughs> so speaking professionally, that's probably a pretty good segue into, into how um, we overcome those obstacles in work. And it's really the same answer. Having a really tremendous support network is, is really what gets me through. Um, shortly after I went through the, the whole cancer treatment, um, it was about a two-year term. I decided it was, it was time for me to make a change. I'd been with Metro Brokers for 11 years. They're a great organization. They're very much pull yourself up by your bootstraps and, and dig in and figure things out. But I was ready to have some assistance in figuring those things out. So Todd approached me and, and we kind of seen each other, known each other socially. And, and I knew Shannon as well. And they said, you know, we should just sit down and talk sometime. So sat down with, with Todd and uh, learned a little bit about Coldwell Banker and, um, what I learned after joining the group was that they have such amazing systems in place that they take out a lot of obstacles for me as an individual, for me as an agent. And it's, it's really an amazing group to be part of. Mm -hmm. um, I tell clients all the time, you know, I joined Coldwell Banker because they have such a robust marketing system. And I feel like they do such a great job at helping marketing properties. It makes my job easier for helping my clients. So um, I'm really a, a huge proponent for Coldwell Banker, a huge proponent for the systems we have in place. You know, the brain damage I did to myself in figuring out the ad content and how to do the print marketing and doing the digital marketing and finding a photographer and all that stuff I had to do as an individual agent. Um, I literally get on a computer, you guys all know this, 15 minutes later, I have the whole marketing plan put together. It's um, photographer is ordered. It's, it's just so seamless and, and well put together. So thank you for making my job easier. <laughs> Your review. Well, you know, it's so interesting because with your life has been complex. It's had a lot of interesting turns and curves, but you continue to manage a household with a husband who's super successful at his bank. And, and as we were talking originally, you know, you told me, look, I'm still responsible for my household most of the time with four, 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 four growing girls, which is complex in life in general. And so your story really radiates with learning how to balance, you know, how do you balance four kids and work and make that happen? And I think that's what a lot of women you know, feel is like, oh my gosh, how do I make that work? And my thought to you is what's one or two suggestions do you have um, in that process of managing family um, and work. Uh, how do you, what, what are your thoughts? What do you walk away with? Uh, it's a challenge. Good. <laughs> yes. Number one, um, I am, I'm a little bit of a calendar Nazi. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not one of those moms with, you know, a whiteboard with everyone's calendar on it. It's all on my phone. And I email and text and share my calendar with those who are appropriate to, to know the information Thank God my twins are 13. They have their own phone. And now they're part of that calendar system. <laughs> so um, trying to stay organized is a big piece of it. And um, there are days when um, I, I want to be a super mom. I want to do it all. And I recognize, and Jim and I recognize that I chose a career um, over staying home with my kids. I'm wired to be in a working environment. I'm wired to truthfully not be home with my kids all day. I, I'm a better mom because I have outside interests, in my opinion. Kudos to the stay-at-home moms. My mom was one, and thank God for her. I, you know, I, she was a huge part to what I did every day, too. But there are days when something has to give. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that my job in life right now is being a mom and being a wife. And work is amazing. Work is fun. Work is inspiring. Um, you know, the benefits are, are great from the satisfaction I get to working with really interesting people. But there are days when I have to say, my family comes first. Anyone who's a parent out there, you know that 
Um, your kids will give you cues when it's time to turn off your phone. They will, they'll be rambunctious, you know, they get whiny, whatever the case is, and there are days where you're like, hey, it's about you for the next two hours. You need this, I need this. So there are days when I have to put work aside to an extent. Um, in the last probably year, year and a half, and, and well, two years, it's come a lot with the coaching, in fact, was um, Todd said, you know, what do we need to do to make you happy and successful in your life? And I recognize that I can, I can say no to work sometimes. So I've made the conscious effort that basically from 2.45 when I start picking my kids up until they're in bed, my phone is usually somewhat shut off. I'm not scheduling phone calls. I'm not scheduling meetings. If it's a client I'm, I'm very invested in and, and they have something going on, a contract we're negotiating, obviously I'm going to pick up that phone or let them know I'm going to get back, back to them in the next hour. But I try to focus on, on my kids and their needs. Um, one other thing I do is I work a lot at night. So eight o'clock, nine o'clock, the kids go to bed. My poor husband suffers because I spend the next two hours working some nights. Um, but this probably sounds a little bit crazy, but what I do is um, I schedule my emails to send in the morning. So I might be working at nine, 10, 11 at night, but my clients are getting emails at seven in the morning. That way they don't expect me to work at 11 o'clock at night. They think that, boy, she's an early riser. I'm up at five thirty six anyway. So it's pretty logical for an email to go out that early. So um, saying no to work sometimes is, is what I have to do to keep my family happy and moving forward and just managing the schedule and maybe not letting people know that I do work crazy hours sometimes. Oh, Jen, you're so, you're so good. It's so wonderful. It's so systems oriented. It's, you're using tools to merge the two. And I, and I really, it's, it's wonderful to hear that because I'm sure there's some people on this call that are thinking, you know, how do I do it? How do I manage it? And, and those tools are working to, and systems to make your life really, really work. And I have to tell you that um, what I, the best part about your story for me always was the partnership that you have with your husband and the relationship through bu bumpy roads and good roads where you support each other. And maybe you didn't notice at the time when it was happening, but he did. And he, he really held your soul in doing that. So super, super excited. I think at this moment, I really appreciate your coming on board and sharing. Um, but what I want to share is a picture of this beautiful family that is unbelievably I don't know. It's just really joyful and exciting. And we really, really thank you for all that you give back to us as well as a company. So thank you so much for your time and your appreciation. And we wish you lots of luck in the future. Thank you. I appreciate it.